Hi, and welcome back to your class box writing automated Java tests using WebDriver. Today, we're going to have a look at using the logger class. We're going to look at what the logger class is and why you would want to use the logger class and how to use the logger class. So first of all, what is this so-called logger class? The logger class is essentially a Java utility class that allows you to log messages in your code. It's similar to how system out print would work, where you would just write system out print to print out some text as part of your running code, which prints out code in the console, but is a little bit more powerful than that. And what we'll do is we will see how we can use this logger class to effectively help us when we try and find out what the output of a test is. So first of all, why would you actually want to use a logger class in a test? Well, initially it would really make a lot of sense to use this logger class because in a test you already know what the outcome is if you were to just say look at the assertion failures. Uh, however, the question is where do you look at these assertion failures? Well, for starters, if you were to say generate reports as part of your test, so let's say that you are running a bunch of tests, maybe tens of tests, maybe hundreds of tests, doesn't really matter on the numbers, and you get a report at the end that tells you the percentage of tests that passed and failed, and you have a look at the specific tests that failed, and you try and find out what the failures were, you can of course just have a look at the stack trace there, assuming your report captures those stack traces. But sometimes, there is a need to not have this kind of noisy information in your reports for let's just say business reasons. Sometimes you need to let's just say pass those reports to someone who only wants to know what the failures are and doesn't really care about all of this noisy information about stack traces. Therefore you might need to omit these results from your reports. So in such cases where you are not able to capture the full information because there is a requirement for it. Where else can you put this information? This is where something like the log class might come in handy. You can use the log class to effectively generate all your logs and put them somewhere safe for you to look at once your tests have finished running. So let's have a look at how you would use this log class. Now I've already written a really basic test that doesn't really do much. All it does is we have an instance of WebDriver, uh, we've got a before method and an after method. In the before method, we are simply setting up the test. In the after method, we are simply quitting the driver altogether. And the test itself is quite simply navigating to the web app website and then navigating to the contact page, filling out the contact form, submitting the form, and then doing a basic assertion to make sure we are on an expected page. Now, if you've been following my series, you should know all of this like the back of your hand. This should be kind of second nature to you by now. But on the off chance, this is the first video someone is watching in the series. I'll go through this really quickly. So what's happening is we're using this driver.navigate2 to navigate to a URL. And we are instantiating this driver in the before method. And then we use driver.findElement methods to use locators such as ID and name to traverse our website from one place to another. So the first thing we do is click on the contact link and then we use the name locators to populate input fields with values we provide. And then finally we click on the submit button at which point we're navigated away from the contact page and onto the contact confirmation page and we then do an assertion to make sure we're on the right page. So let's quickly run this test just to make sure the test works first. So all I'm going to do is right click, run as JUnit test. And that's it. So it looks like the test passed without any issues. So notice that there obviously aren't any outputs because there were no failures, which is kind of a given. But let's just say we wanted to print some information out here. We can obviously put in system out print lines to do it for us. But let's not use system out print lines because they aren't really that useful in that they are really handy for us to see what is happening in the code uh, if we were to just run it and not debug it and we can see the output in this console. 
but wouldn't it be more useful if we were able to pinpoint this information by providing minimal amount of data through let's just say the system out print line but see a lot more information instead uh, meaningful information such as the time it occurred any possible stack traces useful information so let's begin so we're going to take this in small steps. The first thing we're going to try and do is write code to just print out some basic log information. We will then go ahead and see if you we were able to print out the same information and save it to a text file somewhere. And the final thing we'll do is try and format that text file so it's a little bit more user friendly to read. So first things first, let's start trying to implement this log file. So I'm just going to expand this class so we can see it a bit better. The first thing we need to do is actually import in this log class. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and actually use this class. So I'm just going to say private static final logger and this is the name of the class. And we're now going to call it logger. I'm going to say logger dot get logger. And this is where we provide the class name. So in this case it's uh, zoo test dot class dot get name and you should start automatically importing in for you in this case it's actually importing the wrong thing for me i don't want that i want the java util logger class which is this one here so now that we have this logger class available to us we can go ahead and start writing some logger class events so the first thing I want to do is actually print out some information so let's just say I use the logger class here so I'm going to say logger and I want to print out some info and in here all I'm going to say is about to start the test and in here I'm going to say logger dot info about to quit the driver in here I'm going to give a little bit more information saying logger info just going to say about to run the test okay so now let's rerun this class and see if we get any information as part of this log. So all I'm going to do is go there and rerun the same test. Right. So now if you notice, we are now printing out some information, which at the moment isn't probably very useful but the point is it's now giving us a lot more information than we asked so if we look at say the before method all we said was about to start the test and it said about to start the test and it's logged at this level info level i'll go into levels in a bit this has told us exactly what the name of the method was what the name of the class was and the timestamp at which this method was executed so all we said was just this nothing else but it's actually given us a lot of information in relation to when the test ran what time the test ran and what method the test was invoked by or to be more specific when he tried to output the log it told us exactly what the log was and the same thing can be applied for the other given logs so when i talked about info well let's uh let's try and purposely try and fail our test because that would then make a little bit more sense so when i said levels levels are basically log levels so there are different types of levels available to us when you try and log something for instance you can try and get levels for info which is stuff that always prints out really uh, you can get stuff on debug level warning levels, severe levels anyway the levels all come at a hierarchical structure and you can define what level to log at so when you're running your test or when you're running your code in general and you're trying to log against a level and you're trying to save that information you can say what is the amount of information you want to save by setting the log level 
So the next log level we're going to look at is, well, let's have a look at a really bad one. Uh, in that the log level isn't bad, but it's going to try and capture some bad information. So all we're going to say is we're going to try to uh, find an element um, by ID. And we're going to try and find something uh, not exist. So this obviously doesn't exist and it's just going to throw an error. And we're going to try and click on this thing that doesn't exist. And all I'm going to do is try and catch this as an exception. And I'm just going to say exception just to uh, help me with time. And now in here, I'm going to print out another log. And this time I'm going to print out by saying log. So whenever we say log, log is something that's pretty much always saved regardless of level, if I'm right. And I'm going to set the level to log at severe. And I am going to print out the message uh, severe issue occurred. And then finally, I'm also going to ask to print out the stack trace as part of this log. Obviously, go ahead and import that as well. So now when we run the test, uh, the test is going to pass in in that this won't be an issue uh, but the test will then fail when it tries to do this because this obviously doesn't exist but we'll actually get a lot more login information as part of this so let's rerun the test okay so now if you have a look it's logged our about to start the test and about to run the test but it's also logged this severe issue here with our label followed by the stack trace and then at the end it's also logged our about to quit driver or rather the after method log so our logs can even take into account objects as part of the log in that this exception is essentially just an object so we can pass this into our log levels and effectively save this information. So we now have seen how powerful it is to basically capture this information by providing minimal amounts of data in our test, but actually getting a lot out of it. And by doing this, we can abstract all of this noisy information out of, say, something like reports and save it in log files. And that brings us on to our next task, actually trying to save this somewhere. So let's go ahead and try and do that also. So the first thing I need to do is effectively declare a handler. And I'm just going to call this file handler. And I'm going to call it null, or rather assign it a value of null. And obviously import this in, again, under Java util logging. And then in my before method, I'm just going to instantiate the file handler by saying file handler equal to uh, new file handler and this is where you define exactly where it is that you want to generate a file so I'm going to go to the root directory and I'm just going to call this uh, zoo test dot log uh, obviously that was spelled incorrectly and that needs to be imported also I'm also gonna go ahead and set the login level oops sorry that's supposed to be level I want to set it to all so that it ends up logging everything of course it's not going to log anything if we don't add it to the logger first. So we also need to add our file handler to the logger. So if we say logger dot add handler file handler. So now if we run the test, and then open up our directory. We can see that there's been 
a zoo test file generated. If we open that up, we can see that it's generated some really unfriendly, really difficult to read information, but it has generated some information for us. So if you have a quick look, we might be able to see some information in here. So let's have a quick look. So we can see stuff like about to start test. And we can see, let's have a look. We can see the name of our test. Uh, the, the point here is it's really difficult to read. So the final thing we want to do is actually change the format in which this is printed. So if we go back to our test, the final thing we're going to do is introduce a formatter. Uh, let's just call this formatter, which is also equal to null, and import in the formatter. We're going to say formatter is equal to new simple formatter. Again, import that in. And we're going to say file handler dot set formatter. And we're going to give it the value of formatter. And if we now read up, run our test, and have a look at our log file, we can now see all this information is a lot more easy to read. So what have we actually learned in this lesson? We started to look at logs in general and how we can use the Java log utility class to write logs for our test. We then started to see how we can use log files to actually give some meaning to our test, especially in situations where we are not able to save this information to stuff like reports. Then we can still have the option to save it somewhere else. We then had a look at how to generate a log file and place it in a text file somewhere. And finally, we had a look at how we can generate these log files to be a little bit more user friendly to read and interpret. So using these log files is actually a really easy way to capture information which you might otherwise want to omit from other output. But at the same time, ensure that the information that might kind of blow up during your test is captured somewhere and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hi guys i really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you already haven't hit the subscribe button below also follow me on twitter facebook and google links in the description below until next time ciao